to our talk of the tape. Is this all-inclusive rally a breath of fresh leadership or just a particularly aggressive snapback by laggard groups after a long run of underperformance? Let's ask Anastasia Amorosa. She's chief investment strategist at iCapital. Joins me here at Post 9. Great to see you. Good to see you, Mike. So I guess on the spectrum of, look, this is a head fake, short squeeze, just a reflex in small caps against large to this is a genuine tidal change in terms of market leadership and emphasis and the macro message. Where do you come down? I think this is the gray rotation that we've been waiting for all year. And coming into the year, the thesis was that this is likely to be a year of a broader opportunity set and a broader uh, or greater investor optionality for investors predicated on the fact that the Fed is going to cut rates. Well, here we are, finally. It looks like the Fed is likely to cut rates, maybe not in July, in but in September. And that gives not just the sentiment support to some of these trades, but actually the fundamental support to a lot of these trades. You know, why are the small caps rallying? Well, because they do have a lot of leverage, which is hopefully going to reset lower once the Fed cuts rates. Why are the regional banks really rallying is because they have a lot of unrealized losses that uh, maybe will turn into not gains, but at least smaller losses if the Fed actually cuts rates. So I think there's something very much real that's happening with this rotation trade. I guess the question is, can it remain this perfect in a sense where you still have the big cap indexes holding up their near records as opposed to it being a little more of a zero-sum game. And I think back to, you know, if you look at the Russell 2000 relative to the S&P or the NASDAQ, right before all this started last week, it was at like a 22, 23-year relative low, small caps were. Right. Okay? You go back and look at that 25-year chart, and it blasted off in relative terms. But why? Because big cap growth collapsed in the yeah. tech bubble bust. Yeah. In early 2000s. So I guess that's the question for me is in absolute terms, can, can kind of all boats float, but some, you know, <laughs> some higher than others? Yeah. Or do we have to brace for some chop? Well, there's some nuances to that. You know, first of all, I do call it a rotation because I do think the time is ripe to take some gains in mega cap tech. And, you know, the catalyst is starting to change a little bit. You know, why is tech rallied so much this year and last year is because you had tremendous multiple expansion and you also had tremendous earnings and those earnings were getting marked up. But now if you look at the levels, you know, if you look at the earnings revisions, for example, they're pretty high for community communication services and infotech, and they're low, by the way, for all the other sectors. Valuations, as I mentioned, have expanded. And, you know, you had the positive momentum of the economy, but, Mike, the economy has been slowing down. You know, the online advertising business is fine, but if the consumer does slow down in the second half of the year, what does that mean for some of those uh, big tech companies? So I do think, just like the right catalysts are emerging for some of the catch-up trades, the catalysts are sort of going the other way around for some of the big tech companies. Now, to answer your other question, yeah. you know, what does this mean for the aggregate index? I do think that the aggregate index does consolidate and sort of pause uh, from this rip-roaring rally that we had. And the other reason I say that, Mike, is because when you look at what the markets do going into the first rate cut, uh, they rally into it, but then they consolidate and pause and maybe even sell off in the three months after that mm -hmm. first rate cut. So I suspect we're approaching that moment of consolidation for the broader indices. Yeah, I've been wondering about that and looking at that history as well. And I mean, first of all, you can, it's hard to characterize what the typical or average response is to the market from a first rate cut, just because the variation is really wide, yeah. right? So you have, this, I mean, the market just levitated in the mid 90s and that soft yeah. landing when you got that one. And then, of course, first rate cut in 01 and 08, yeah. not so great. Um, and I do also wonder because we basically this bull market started with the Fed still tightening. Like, I just wonder yeah. if the rules are a little bit scrambled right here. I, I think that's exactly the right way to think about the history, because we can just look at the median and say, well, this is what this means, because the median includes 2001, 2007. And what you see there is the consolidation that ultimately turned into a downturn and the defensive really led the way for more than just the three months. And on the flip side, if you look at the 1995 and actually a lot of the non-recessionary scenarios, you did have that near term consolidation. But the uptrend does actually resume about six months after the first rate cut. So to me, sort of the playbook for the next, you know, call it into year end is if we do get a pullback, if we do get some consolidation, you want to use that as a buy-in opportunity. By the way, there's elections that are coming up, which probably will stoke volatility as well. So if you do hit, uh, you know, some, some of that downdraft in the fall, I think you want to buy that because ultimately I'm still in the soft landing camp mm -hmm. um, and we get rate cuts. That's a pretty bullish scenario for stocks.